Hello everyone, Lisa here. Today I am coming to you to show you four different techniques for incorporating photographs printed on fabric or any other type of graphic that you've printed on fabric. Four different ways to incorporate them into your quilting or sewing projects. I am in the process of working on this wall quilt and I'm loving it so much. We are using four different blocks with photographs in this uh, quilt series. So I thought I would bring you along and show you the four different ways that I added my pictures. I do have some information uh, that hopefully answers some of your questions about printing on fabric. And that section is about 10 minutes long. So if you already know the ins and outs of printing on fabric, you can fast forward about 10 minutes through all of that talking. If you have questions, I'm hoping that I am answering uh, all of them, or at least most of them, in the next 10 minutes. Then we get to the four different techniques on how I put together these blocks, and uh, we have some fun today. Thanks for joining me, and stay tuned. Here we are. I have all of my photos printed out on fabric and they are heat set and ready to be sewn into our project. Hi Bailey. Hi Austin. <laughs> they just got married recently and we had a celebration here at our house and these are photos from that celebration and I am going to be using these photos to demonstrate the four ways to add photos to your quilt. Before we get started with our photos, I do want to answer a ton of questions that I got on my last video on printing on fabric. So let's go over the two different kinds of printers and hopefully answer most of your questions. Um, I'll do my best. Let's talk about laser printers first. Yes, you can print in color and black and white. My printer only prints in black and white and uh, I have a laser printer. I am saving for a color printer, so I'm really excited and hoping to get one of those soon. I've had excellent results printing with my laser printer. Um, I have found that my specific printer and toner is permanent when heat set on each type of fabric that I've tried, and uh, so I really, really love it for incorporating images into my quilts. I have had uh, comments about um, one viewer's laser printer was not permanent when she washed it, and I'm not sure the whole process that she did, uh, but I do know that she sewed her pictures into a quilt and the pictures faded. So I always say, test your prints before you use your pictures in a quilt that is going to be washed. Now, if you are not washing your project, like this quilt that we're making now is an art quilt. It's going to go up on the wall for display purposes only and will never get washed. Then most of these things do not apply to those types of quilts. We are talking about quilts that you want to give, give as gifts or quilts for yourself that will go through the laundry. Always test your prints. Uh, the fabrics might be different. And all printers are different. And, and so you definitely, before investing in time and uh, fabric and ink, do a test print and check for bleeding and color fasting. With laser printers, only use freezer paper to back your photos when printing. Okay, freezer paper does not have a sticky adhesive that holds the fabric. Uh, freezer paper uses heat and with your iron you could adhere the freezer paper to the back of your fabric and that helps glide it through the printer and uh, feeds your fabric through and so most of the time uh, it feeds through nicely without any jams. Do not use prepared fabric that you have bought in the store that says for inkjet printers. Those do have an adhesive and a laser printer sets the toner with heat 
as it goes through the printer and you do not want any of those adhesives to melt within your printer. Again, always test print before using your photos or printed images into a quilt that's going to be washed. Toner is a polyester powder and it goes out on your paper or your fabric and there's a heating device within the printer that uh, heat sets and dries that toner very quickly as it goes through and once your print is out, if you heat set it on fabric, most of the toners are permanent. I know in my case, mine are. Uh, again, I've had a viewer that did not have permanent results. And so again, referring back to this, always test your prints first. Uh, if you have issues with bleeding or uh, fading when you test your print in the wash, there are products like Bubble Jet that can help uh, pre-treat your fabrics before you even print on them that help with the fading and the bleeding. So if you test your print and you do have some bleeding or fading, uh, experiment with some products like Bubble Jet. Uh, there's also some homemade versions that you can find online that uh, are claimed to work just as well. So that is laser printing. Inkjet printers. Yes, you can print in both color and black and white. Uh, you'll always, with both printers, want to pre-wash your fabrics for the best results. <laughs> Y'all know I don't pre-wash anything. But the fabric does come with a sizing uh, agent on the material. And if you get rid of that, the ink, especially with uh, inkjet printers, does absorb into the fabric and you do get better results using an inkjet printer. So pre-wash your fabric. Not all printer inks with inkjet printers are the same. Some are dye based and some are pigment based. There is a difference and they do handle washing differently. And so always heat set your, your, uh, your photos or your uh, images and test because if you are using a dye-based ink in your printer, it does uh, handle the washing differently than pigment-based inks. Again, test for bleeding and fading. If you're using your prints in uh, a quilt or a project that's going to get washed, and uh, the bubble jet does help if you experience uh, fading and bleeding, try some bubble jet or different, uh, there are different products out there that help with this issue. And let's talk about four printing factors that do affect uh, the printing quality when you are printing on fabric. Number one is your fabric quality. The best results I've had is using a good, good quality muslin or quilter's cotton. Uh, experiment with different fabrics that you have. Uh, take the same photo and print it off on different fabrics and find the fabric that uh, works best for your printer. And uh, I usually tend to stick to the same fabrics <laughs> when I'm printing on fabric. Once I found a, a fabric that takes my uh, prints very well, I tend to always use those types of fabrics. The photo quality. Uh, for best results, use a good quality photo. Resizing your photo does affect the resolution and the print quality of your photo. So if you are um, taking a small photo and you want to put it into a larger block, uh, stretching and resizing the photo does make it pixelated and fuzzy. So you want to start with a good quality photo and print true to size or do very, very little manipulation when it comes to resizing your photo. The printer quality matters. Now it does not uh, mean that you can't use an older printer, but printer technology has come a far, far away. So if you're in the market, you know that pretty soon you're going to be uh, purchasing a printer or upgrading. They do make printers, they're uh, inkjet printers that are made for printing photos if you want to do a ton of these types of quilts. 
uh, then you might want to investigate photo designed printers. <laughs> I do a lot of graphics on photos as well. So there is a difference when it comes to um, like a photo designated printer or one that's uh, designed really for office printing, you know, printing off um, office documents. They do have differences, although, you know, most printers do a pretty fair and decent job printing, but that does affect the quality. And also, although I'm a laser printer owner and I plan on investing into uh, a color laser printer, inkjet printers do print photos with a better result than laser printers. It's just the technology uh, between the two. Uh, the inkjet printers tend to do photographs uh, a little better. Although I'm very, very pleased with this. This is a laser printer, and I think that's going to work nicely in what I want to do. The last we will talk about is the settings. Uh, remember that when you put paper backing onto fabric, it does change uh, the thickness and what you're feeding through the printer. So make sure to go in and change your settings accordingly. You might want to change to a thicker paper setting. And if you're printing photos, experiment with the different settings like uh, photo quality versus document and things like that. Again, all printers are different and um, handle the inks and toners differently. So before you just jump into uh, starting your project, I do say invest in some time with experimenting. Experiment your fabrics, experiment your printer, and the inks or toners that are in your printer and your settings. Once you figure out the best combination that works for you, write all this down and so the next time you have a project, you have all of that experimenting behind you and you can just jump into creating. <laughs> all right, all of those logistical things are out of the way and we are on to the tutorial. We are starting with technique number one. Because we have printed our photo directly onto fabric, see there's our fabric just like that, we can treat this like any other type of fabric that we sew into our quilts. I have a couple of examples here for you. Let's say you were making this block and you wanted to do the center square as your picture. You substitute this green material for your photo and then sew together all of your pieces just like you would any other type of uh, fabric. Same with this block here. Let's say you wanted to substitute these four triangles as one photo. You would substitute those fabrics for your photo, sew it with your quarter inch seam allowance just like you would any other type of fabric, and make your block. I am working with my Victorian wall uh, quilt photo, <laughs> and we are starting up in this top right hand corner. Okay, so I have my pieces here laid out. I've already assembled my four uh, one and a half inch squares for the top and bottom. And then my eight one and a half inch square blocks have been pieced together for my sides. So I will sew it just like any other quilt block. I will attach the top and bottom rows to my photo with a quarter inch seam allowance and then press those open. And then I will attach my side borders and uh, again using quarter inch seam allowance and then press everything open. I'm going to go ahead and do that and we'll meet right back. And we're back from sewing this block together and you see how cute that is? <laughs> I love it so far. So again, we treat our photo just like we would any other type of material according to your pattern. So on this pattern, it called for the photo to be cut four and a half by six and a half. 
and for all of these little squares to be cut at one and a half by one and a half and then assemble according to the directions. So we treated our fab our picture just like quilters cotton uh, and used it within the quilt block and you can see all of the seams on the back. There's no backing on the photo. It's just the fabric with the photo printed on it. This is technique number one. And we are on to technique number two, picture frames, right? Why not put your picture into a fabric frame? So to do this technique, find any desired frame template that you like. Take some heat and bond light and trace on the paper side your template. Iron that onto the back side of your frame material, just like I did here. And then cut out your frame. I still have the paper left on my frame. Find the center of your block, and that's very simple. You just fold your backing fabric two ways. Just like that, and sort of give it a finger press. And for a few minutes, you're going to see an indication, not very easily on this fabric, of the center or find where you want to put your picture. <laughs> I have my picture here. Again, it's just the fabric. I have not backed this with anything. Sometimes if you're using a really dark uh, material as your background, you might want to use something like um, a fusible uh, interfacing to sort of keep this nice and bright white. This background does not affect the appearance of my photo at all. So we will just put that into position where we want it. And I'm going to use a little bit of washable school glue just to keep this picture in place while we manipulate this block. And it doesn't take much, just a little bit on all the four sides. And that just ensures that everything is going to stay in place while I'm working with the construction of this block. After you've cut out your frame, just remove the paper backing. Let me grab a pin. Remove the paper backing from your frame. Just like that. You'll see the shiny residue on the back side. Line up exactly where you want your frame to be, making sure it covers all of the edges of your photo. And I think that looks really good. And now we're going to press this into place. Once it's pressed, we're going to do an applique stitch. And uh, that just secures all of the edges around my frame and secures the photo within behind that frame. And so uh, we won't get any of the frayed edges on this particular piece. If you are using a heat and bond that is a permanent bond, you do not have to do the stitching. But I really do like the look of the stitching anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and heat set this in place and do an applique stitch around the outside of my frame and the inside oval and we'll meet back. I'm back now from the sewing machine. I stitched a smaller zigzag stitch around my frame and I'm hoping that you can see that. And This is the back. So adding frames around your picture to incorporate them into your quilt is a great way to dress up your photos and get them into your quilt. All different types of shapes of frames and uh, really the possibilities are endless. So finishing up technique number two, picture frames. Now we are on to technique number three. 
For this technique, uh, I don't know that this look would go in every single type of quilt or project that you're going to make. However, if you're looking for a shabby chic or collage type of look, then this is going to be something that you're going to love. I have uh, my two photos. Of course, you cut your photos out the size that you want them and also your background piece. This is basically scrapbooking in fabric form. <laughs> I have my two photos here. Uh, unfortunately, I think they printed a little bit dark, but I can still see them and I, I'm pretty happy with them. I inked around the edges of these photos to give them a more vintage look. And then I took some cotton muslin fabric and I stamped two images and used my pinking shears around these two pieces and also inked the edges. And now we are just making a collage. You arrange your photos and uh, any other pieces the way that you like them. And then we're going to use again the uh, glue stick just to tack these pieces down in place while we take everything to the machine. When we're done I will um, fray the edges on my photos. Now this look might not be for everyone. If you don't want a frayed edge to your photos, I do recommend using some pinking shears because that really helps. What we're going to do after everything is tacked down into place with the glue stick is we're going to do a running stitch close to, but not exactly on the edge, okay? and we're just doing this raw edge. Nothing is finished here. All the way around our pieces, securing them down onto our background fabric. I will probably use uh, a brown or a beige color thread and stitch around each individual piece. When I'm done, I will come with my fingernail and sort sort of uh, just rough up the edges so that they start to fray. Again, this look might not be for everyone. However, it really, really will look nice in this type of quilt. So I'm going to go ahead and glue everything into place. Heat set that so that this is dry when we bring it to the machine. I will stitch this out. And I think I will bring you along for the stitch out on this because this is slightly different than just doing uh, an applique stitch or sewing fabric into a quilt block. This is a little bit different and so I will bring you along for the sewing process of this block. All right, everything is tacked down into place. So you can see I can work with this. It's not absolutely glued everywhere but it's just enough to keep it all in place exactly where I want it while I'm stitching everything down. This background here is a background from my kit that comes with the pattern for this little quilt that I'm working on. I printed it on a very very lightweight muslin so I do want to use I'm going to use uh, just a couple coffee filters as a stabilizer while I'm stitching everything down. Now we're just going to uh, go uh, along the edge, not exactly on the edge, but we're going to give ourselves some room so that we can fray some of the edges on the photos. It's as simple as just going around each one of the photos. And I will probably uh, speed this part up so that uh, you don't have to sit through the whole duration of this, but you get to see everything.
Alright, here we are back from the sewing machine. I have trimmed all of my jump stitches and all of my loose threads. And uh, this is what it looks like. I still have my paper attached. Coffee filters tear very easily, but if you get nervous tearing close to your stitches, just take a pair of scissors and cut close to uh, the outline of your design. And you could leave this in. It's pretty lightweight. Uh, or tear it out. So this is where we are to fray the edges. I've already started on that picture there. You can see it has started to fray. And we're going to work on this bottom one here. I just take a pair of scissors that have a good, nice, sharp cutting edge to them. And I get it started just by going and clipping this raw edge all the way around my photo. Just like that. And once I've clipped all the way around the photo, I just take my fingernail and I start scratching at that raw edge. And of course, the more you do it, the more of a frayed appearance you're going to get. like that we've already started on that bottom photo so you can see the difference between where I just started and over here where I have not messed with that at all these two little stamp pieces I will just leave that way because I like the pinked edge and uh, then we will call this a block so this finishes uh, technique number three frayed raw edge now we are on to technique number four our last technique for this tutorial I love using lace and trims to frame my pictures I have here just some lace that I picked up from Joann's and I cut it into four pieces and right now it's just laying on my photo I cut my photo to the desired size uh, and my background is already cut to um, the size that the pattern calls for. Before I cut my photo, I did back this one with heat and bond light. So that really stabilizes this photo for when we're adding the lace trim all the way around the edges. So I'm going to remove the paper backing. Position the photo exactly where I want it to be. Just like that. Strings everywhere. <laughs> and then I take my four pieces of lace, or first, uh, before I move on, I want to heat set this into place. And then I will take my four pieces of lace and arrange them exactly the way that I like them to be. See, I've mixed them all up now. Just like that. Oh, I think that goes there. <laughs> and uh, what I'll do with these pieces is I will uh, just hold these in place with some pins. Once I find exactly the way that I like it to be, I will pin this in place. And then I'll take it to the machine and with an ivory color thread, I will do a zigzag stitch through my lace. I will bring you along for that process just so you can see how the machine stitches over the lace. I'm at the machine. I have my ivory color thread in the machine. And I decided what I'm going to do first because I hate using pins. Is I'm going to do a straight stitch. Uh, probably a longer straight stitch set at like 3.5 and go along the edge of this lace because the lace overlaps the photo and just do a straight stitch all the way around securing the lace and the photo in place and then I can take these pins out and do a more secure stitch like a zigzag stitch to really hold this lace down so I'm going to go ahead and do that and you can follow along
Okay, I just came back from cleaning all the strings off of my block and you can see it has a very handmade vintage look to it. I personally like some of the non-perfect edges of the lace where I trim them different lengths and little bits and pieces. I think that looks very handmade and vintage to me. Of course, if you want it to be exact and perfect, you can manipulate and finagle all of your lace trimmings exactly the way that you like them. But you can see the ivory thread just blended right into this crochet lace. I did the straight stitch right along the edge, which not only held the lace in place while I could take the pins out and do the zigzag stitch, but it also really secured the photo, which is just underneath the edge of this lace. Then I came in and did a wider, looser zigzag stitch just to really hold this lace down. It's not going anywhere. You can see the stitches on the back. So that is our fourth technique, adding trims and laces to the edge of your photos. So I hope that from these four different techniques, you have uh, seen something that inspires you uh, to add photos to your quilt and to give you ideas on different ways that you can do that. Thank you all for joining me. Uh, if you're interested in this little quilt that's coming along, uh, I will be posting a video sometime this week on that quilt. Uh, it is going to be probably one of my favorite quilts that I've done so far. <laughs> Just because I love vintage looking things. And uh, so this is the layout for that quilt. Today we did a this block, this block, this one down here, and this block here. So you can see I have the hardest parts of this quilt already done. <laughs> so stay tuned if you'd like to see how that quilt comes together. If you have questions about the printing process, I'd love to help. I hope that the uh, little rundown that I did earlier did answer a lot of questions. I know that uh, some of you might need additional help uh, or things that I didn't cover. So you can ask in the comment section below. Check out the description box for updates. I will link uh, the tutorial for this video once I do it in the description box. I will link my Facebook page if you'd like to join me on Facebook. And um, I will also link two different videos. My original video with uh, printing on the June Taylor's Color Fast Sheets for inkjet printers. And I will show uh, or put a link for the other video that I did uh, printing on fabric where um, I printed out backgrounds for the digital love letter kit. Check those videos out if you haven't seen them. Thank you all for joining me and I hope you guys have a fantastic day.